Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at how quickly and easily you can make sequence animations in Cartoon Animator 5 by importing SVG and PSD format files. This is an optimal workflow for producing high quality animations as it doesn't require setting keyframes and instead uses simple operations. Let's first take a look at how we can import sequence animations. Here you can see a candle with a stationary flame and that's what we're going to do is add an animated flame to it. We're going to start off with SVG format first. It's important to pay attention to the naming conventions and layer structure when following this workflow. Let's explore the naming convention first. What you want to do to your main sprite name string is add the word sequence with one colon on either side. You also want to create a new layer group to group the elements of your animation sequence, which are like the individual frames. In this case, I'm naming the group Flame01 and moving it to the main Combustion FX sequence group. Then simply move the elements to the Fire01 subgroup and go up and save the project as an SVG file. From there, you can click and drag the SVG file into Cartoon Animator 5 and resize and position it appropriately. If we enter into this sprite editor, you can see each element is converted to a separate sprite in the same order as defined earlier. However, if we play back, there is no animation yet. To apply the animated elements in sequence, simply right click on the sprite and find the animation that you defined in the action menu. You can see that it's named Flame01, which is the same name we defined to the group of elements in Illustrator. Once applied, it will create a short clip in the motion track of the timeline with playback speed of one element per frame in CTA 5. Seven frames go by pretty fast, so I'll loop it to see a more sustained example. If we look closely at each frame played back, you may notice that the order goes from 07 to 01. This is because in the 2D graphic editor, sequences will play back from the bottom to the top of the layers by default. If you want it to play from 01 to 07, you can add the top down string at the end of the main layer and re export the SVG file. If we import the adjusted SVG into CTA5 and play back, you'll see that the playback order of the sprites has now changed, even if the order of the sprites remains the same in the sprite editor. Please be aware that if you're using a PSD workflow, the naming convention will be slightly different. When saving in PSD format, in the main sprite string name, you'll want to use the underscore symbol as opposed to the colon. Once saved as a PSD, it will operate identically to the one we just imported via SVG format, complete with an action menu animation. Since each image element in Illustrator represents a single frame of playback in Cartoon Animator, the speed of the animation will often be too quick in many cases. Luckily, in Cartoon Animator, you can click on the icon in the timeline to enter into speed mode, then click and drag on the edge of the applied clip to slow down the playback rate. You can then toggle back to loop mode and click and drag to create as many loops of the slowed down motion clip that you want. Naturally, you can also copy and paste motion clips to anywhere you want in the timeline, combined with different looping lengths for a more varied result. On top of that, you can also use the time warp feature to alter the playback rate of the sprites in the clip as well. If you right click on the clip, you can open up the time warp window, which has a number of presets. You can experiment with these various playback curves to get different results. If I choose the stuttering start and end preset, it will make the flame appear as though it was suddenly disturbed by wind at those parts of the clip. Time warp is a slightly more advanced feature, but it's simple enough to just test out the presets for yourself and find the results you want. Lastly, let's look at how you can build an animation library in your props action menu. Here we have a fried egg object that contains multiple groups, each covering a different type of performance we want for our egg. 
ranging from low to high heat, as well as a seasoning sequence. These are the groups which will represent the animations in our action menu. Again, be sure to follow the naming conventions and layer structure mentioned earlier. You can follow the same procedure to save and export, then click and drag the file into our project once again. You'll notice here that we have the four animations in our action menu, which I can move around if I want. Naturally, you can apply, loop, and edit these motion clips in whatever way you see fit. This is what it will look like when they're all combined into a single playback. Keep in mind that these animations will be embedded into your prop, so you can save it to your content manager and reapply any time to future projects. A couple of quick tips to end off here. Since the elements are all represented as sprites in your sprite editor, you also have the option to switch them manually. When you do, you'll see the keyframes appear in the sprite subtrack. Once you've set up that custom sequence, you can then click and drag in the collect clip track for the duration of the clip that you want to save. Then right click and choose transfer to action menu. It will then be saved there and you can apply it easily at any time in the future. One final thing to be aware of is the sprite pivot position. You'll notice upon closer observation that all of the sprites are anchored in the middle of the flame, when we generally want them all to be anchored to the tip of the candle wick. With the sprite selected, I'll then enter into composer mode where I can click on the pivot button on the top toolbar and choose the bottom box from our preset window that pops up. I can then click on edit pose and click and drag the whole sprite up a little higher. This means that when we apply it in the future, the sprites will be a bit higher with a root point or pivot point at their base. You can then open up the sprite editor and go through each sprite one by one to ensure that they originate from the same root point. The end result is that they won't be jumping around as much vertically and will have a consistent origin point for the flame. That's all there is to it. This pipeline workflow makes it easier than ever to import your custom animation ready props in SVG or PSD format and animate them with a couple of clicks. Thanks for watching everyone, I'll see you in the next video.